This is Michael, and you're listening to the Outward Realms podcast. I have a very special episode, an interview episode. Unfortunately, we don't have Drew available for this one, but I do have Steve Toma, who is uh, coming to us after winning both the narrative event and the competitive event. This episode will be focusing on the competitive event because the narrative had some pretty wild rules, which pretty, I think, drastically changed the game, how the game is played, and uh, are not commiserate to a standard game of Outward Realms, which is not to say they weren't a good time, but I think that uh, focusing on the core game is going to be of more benefit to more people, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, this is our this is our current undefeated champion. Say hello to everyone, Steve. Ooh, thanks for having me on, Mike. Of course. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So for those that don't know, uh, Steve came to Las Vegas Open 2022, uh, played in both days of our events. Uh, in the second day, uh, went 3-0, and undefeated with Batra. Go ahead and tell us about that. Yeah, no, but Batra, it was, uh, it was uh, great to represent the, the Frogs. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what, do you, no. what do you like most about him? I mean, the, the artwork looks great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And, the, and then the lore behind him. Yeah. Oh, Easy that's to awesome. get behind. Yeah. So when you're playing them on the tabletop, you nor, because this was a you know the first event, we we asked people to stick to the uh, army box compositions. Uh, but in the future, people will you know we'll let people roster, do it if yeah, they yeah. want for the rosters. Yeah. What comes in a botcher army box? Uh, what is it? Uh, it was two units of hunters, two units yep. of stalkers, uh, two field generators. One predation pod, one uh, Skitari hall, one venerator, and one hunt master. Yeah, Shikari. But yeah, absolutely. Right. <laughs> Skitari is, a, I think, another oh, game. That's 40K. <laughs> <laughs> I also have yeah, a 40K no, that's background. Perfect. <laughs> that's perfect. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty interesting, it's a pretty interesting balance. With the points changes, the Shikari is now the cheapest construct in the game. So that's oh, yeah, kind of fantastic. Great yeah. anti-tank. Yeah. So round one, what did you play against? Round one, I I played against uh, Mike, Mike, Mike uh, from uh, Filthy Casuals. Yep, Mike Tester. Yeah, and he he we, it was a mirror game, Batra versus Batra. And I had actually played against him the final round of the casual uh, of the uh, the narrative. So we had already okay. seen each other's strategies. And yeah, he he really wanted to be attacker for that game, and he got it. Mm. And okay. I I I feel in a Batra versus Batra, being defender actually helps greatly because you have that that last act activation. Okay, that and, really and that really just helps to. Oh, okay, I need to get out. You know, for observer report, I need to, I need to get out of close combat. I need to kill that unit and and get away. Yeah, hundred percent. And then you can also have a scenario you can't plan for it, but you could get the double activation as well. That also, which I never did. <laughs> oh, okay. But it yeah. can happen. Like yeah. it, you can't plan for it, but it is nice when it happens. Definitely. Yeah. So that's cool. What what tactics do you think uh, they he was going for since you played two games with them versus what your plan was? Uh, so, so learning from previous encounters with Batra. Uh, and in having and running this list with two field generators, mm -hmm. uh, hiding the field generators was 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 key. Just getting them as far back as possible behind cover. Uh, most of the time, the field generators against Botcher are not going to be very useful because of all of the uh, armor pierce. Yeah, absolutely. So I was able to hide mine, and uh, he was very aggressive with his field generators. And oh, okay. Using my predation pods, I was able to first turn, jump up, pop the first one, jump them back, uh, wither the fire, jump over, kill the second one, and then sat my predation pods for the rest of the game, and then just played uh, frog hop with the with my stalkers and hunters. I like frog hop. Yeah. Do you? So here's a question. I'm going to ask this for each factions because you played all three factions that that showed up there. I did. What do you think as a botcher player? about deploying cloaked or uncloaked versus Batra? I, I of course I deploy all all cloaked it okay. it's, uh you know m most armies have a dedicated artillery unit that yeah. can shoot them off that can shoot them uh with the low number of models for Batra the cloaking starting cloaked is 
is, is essential. Huh? Okay. That's interesting because we, I've seen it both ways. I see people who will put almost everything uncloaked out so that they can cloak after acting. But then, yeah. That's what, or, or maybe if you're an attacker, like one unit, because you know you're, you know, oh, I'm going first. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to leave one guy uncloaked, run him up, shoot, cloak, and then, sure. you know. Yeah, absolutely. That's a possibility too. So I like the two schools of thought there, uh, trying to, trying to be someplace else while cloaked after having acted or starting highly defensible and then just dealing with the consequences of being uncloaked. Exactly. After, after moving out. Well, that's super cool. So which, which additionals did you end up taking? Ooh, I, I chose the, uh, was it increased mobility and uh, eager for battle. Uh, you're, you're talking oh. about the, Oh, the, the uh, yeah. Actually, the additionals were for the um, were for the mission, but that's cool. You're oh, using. Oh, I should have asked which sub faction you're using. Thank you for calling it oh, out. Yeah, Clan Karuk. The, yeah, Karuk with your awesome lit up models. The oh yeah, plus yeah. one. That's plus one to movement characteristic and plus one to engage. It's right, engage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. M multiple awesome. times. Multiple times while moving. I was like, he was like, wait, you have a movement of seven. I'm like, actually, I got a uh, movement of eight. Ooh. Yeah, which, okay. Like, that, that extra inch and that, the extra uh, inch and engage made a huge difference. Oh, that's super cool. That's yeah. awesome. So, but for the additionals in your round one, uh, like oh. observe and report. And... Oh, oh, sorry. Observe and report, combined arbs, hold the line. Eh? Perfect. And did you kind of maintain that through all three rounds? Through all three rounds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you. You so observe and reports very interesting for Batra because they are it, it's actually it seems like it would be counterintuitive because that means you don't want to be engaged, correct? Or de 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 definitely, yes, yeah. Uh, so you either want to kill what you're engaged with, or it, Batra are very good at killing what they're engaged <laughs> with, uh, they are very good at that, uh, yeah, they are. Yeah, combined arms makes a lot of sense, uh, killing because you're, you're just planning, yeah. Just planning, and then you did observer report, combine arms, and stay on the move. And, and, uh, hold the line. Hold the line. Oh yeah, hold the line. And even when we made that uh, tougher to score, it used to be one and two units, which is yeah, very now it's easy. Two and three. Now it's two and three, so it's a little yeah. tougher, uh, especially after round one. Definitely. But, but yeah, I, that's cool. I got max hold the line for all of my games. Those field generators just living back there. Just living. Yeah, they rent free. Red free <laughs> I like that yeah. oh, that's super cool okay so you got you did your round one versus mike you took your additionals uh he went really aggressive you had already seen his game plan and the narrative so you kind of had a, a both a continuation of what you had been doing the day before and Definitely. You, just, you you knew the matchup went in i as i recall you scored very high in that yeah. round I, I was uh, the the first round and a half was ju was just a bloodbath, yeah. and then towards the end it got very like okay I need I need to get my my one kill in melee one one kill in shooting, and I was able to to plan it out and it was essentially at the end it was a stalemate but I was able right. to pull out those objectives in the oh, end very nice and, and pulled very it out but yeah no, gr uh, great opponent uh, it was v very competitive I was it, it was uh, times during uh round two where it could have it could have gone around one yeah round one yeah yeah that's awesome thank you thank you for sharing that i appreciate it uh let me think of anything else i want to ask about the round one because i think we pretty much covered the base there uh yeah. let's go into round two where you played versus the realm correct oh uh, hexagoda oh hexagoda was your round two. Oh, that's yeah. great we had one hex player in the in the event. So yeah, he, he, he was great. He was he was a lot of fun. Uh, I underestimate warriors every time, uh, <laughs> and they are just so good, man. Like I uh, was super aggressive with my Venator first turn because I really wanted to take out those warriors because I had played uh, Sam in the uh, the narrative also. Oh, okay, and. Uh, in the competitive, I was like, oh yeah, th that that anti tank, you know, two shots each is is pretty. I, I should try to take him out. Well, I was aggressive with my venator, whiffed, and his return fire killed my venator in a single volley. Yeah. Oh wow! With yeah, the, uh, shooting with warriors, shooting with warriors, single volley. Yeah. Wow, because it's a bunch of two damage armor piercing. Two damage, yeah, yeah. He got the he got like eight hits on me. I was like, oh okay, this is gonna be fun, and uh, no no sixes. Oh, oh, oh no, not like oh man. Oh. Yeah. 
Not like that. Oof, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Those so th- that was that was that was like activation one of, of that <laughs> game. I was like, oh no, this is gonna be this is gonna be this is gonna be you trouble. Lose your, you you lose your tank to warrior shooting, and you're like, uh, hmm, okay. <laughs> I'm in I'm in danger. <laughs> oh no. So how did you pull it out after such a really nasty initial uh situation uh aggressive stalkers okay very aggressive stalkers uh piercing three damage across the board yeah he was he he advanced his warriors very quickly and he he left his his constructs back Mm -hmm. uh but he had two the two of the flame pods which you know are, are fine in the back and yeah he was he was very aggressive with his his warriors moving up and i was able to cloak up and Got the charge on him, even with the minus one to hit, hitting on yeah. threes. I was able to to take them out pretty pretty handedly. Yeah, yeah. The the danger. So the for the hex player, uh, relying on. There's two things that I think the hex player should be thinking about if the when dealing specifically with stalkers. The first part is you never let them. If you can, you never let them swing more than once. You want to be positioned in a way where they're forced to move and then engage. So that way they only get one set of swings because the math should actually have them. If it's a full set of uh, a full set of warriors, they should be coming out. OK, um, that should be nine swings hitting on threes. Yep. Um, maybe get a six, maybe don't with the three damage looking for the five up you should be able to spread that across that fairly well, and you probably lose maybe one or two warriors, right? Yeah, no, I was able to uh, to shoot into him a little bit too, and then oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the stalkers auto two wounds when they jump in yep. was was very nice. Just, yeah, oh, there's, yeah. Two, there's two wounds exactly. down there. And, yep. you know, I, I got, ma- like, I think I got max hits on, oh, on yeah. one of the there charges, so then it was just him rolling, yeah, six up, five ups. Yeah, and something I noticed in that game too was that the I thought the queenling it was, was way, way too far back. Uh, was yeah. was he was camping in the back, and it, yeah. and that that was something that happened in our our narrative game too. Oh, okay, and it it, 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 it kind of stuck. Uh, though in in the narrative game, he chose the move the move everybody thing, but in the competitive, his it, it, everything was a lot tighter. But the queenling was still in the back. Yeah, we we refer to the queenling as the murder pinball. Murder pinball, yeah. Yeah, because knowing when to commit the queen is very key to successful Batra play, but not committing the queen at all is, I I think, a really big um, lessening of their power. Definitely. Because that queenling can literally engage any Batra infantry unit. And slaughter them. <laughs> well, pick them up maybe in the first swing. will certainly pick them up in the second swing. And then can move away. Right? Yeah. And get for next activa- to for, things. For, for activations, right? Right. For... And then get near something else to pass wounds on. So, like, the counter charge or counter shooting is not that and then have impactful. The, have the, have the, uh, the worker uh, Whatever. blade of wounds. Yeah, yeah, or whatever. Warrior blade of wounds, an armored hexapod of blade of wounds. It doesn't make a difference as long as you hop out, do some damage, hop back, or hop in, do some damage, and then move command something up near you. Oh right? God, Th- that that reminds me. One of his his uh, hexapods, his uh, the the flame pod. Yeah. Uh, managed to charge one of my war my uh, hunter hunter units. Yeah. And I was like, oh oh shoot, I'm in trouble. Uh, and he he whiffed. He got two wounds on me. Uh, I fat, put two wounds on two of my guys. I then activated, attacked him. Th- you know, attacked him three yeah. times. Forty five yeah. attacks and killed it. That'll do it. That, yeah, I was like, oh, she's like, oh, uh oh, brutal. And what's with an uncloaked unit, the flame hexapod actually is in the spray configuration is actually quite dangerous. Because every armor save that is, you know, dropped knocks most of the wounds off of a Botcher infantry model. Oh, like, there's a big difference between a Botcher infantry model with four wounds and then one wound. That's on fire. Yeah, because, right. Oh, especially I, I gotta, if they I got a cleanse. I got a cleanse. Or, or what die? if they're activated out? Then they don't get to. Then it's just yeah. auto death, right? Definitely, yeah. Yeah, so there's some pretty clever counterplay that a Hexagoda player can plan for. And I think one of the higher level tactics that as you play more games starts to come into fruition is learning to coax activations out of your opponents 
definitely so that they're left unable to activate and then you can commit right safely oh yes okay that that thing's now done i can wait for my last two activations to to deal with that i i have certainly uh taken an activated out unit and then engaged it with a single model with the intent of not killing it just to stay engaged just to be safe yeah just to be safe you can't leave and i'm safe in combat correct yeah, that is that is one hundred percent a thing. That's uh, yeah, also why the field deal. generators can blow up. Yes. Yeah, that's specifically why that's there. I really wanted to try that, but no one no one came close to my field generators <laughs> that are sitting there scoring you two points around. Like you definitely need to kill those things, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, aggress- aggressive Botro front line. You know, who are you going to deal with? The the uncloaked uh, hidden. Uh, field generator or the the stalker sure. unit sneaking up on you no no you're right you apply all this front end pressure but like you have to compensate for that right and it's playing into this, the additionals that are interesting to you so that makes complete sense Definitely. and this was a this was an inexperienced hexagoda player They're, this was like their first real set of games uh using one of the armies that we brought the army box composition which for those who don't know is a queenling Two uh, units of warriors, one unit of winged warriors, uh, three units of worker swarms, two flame hexapods, and an armored hexapod. And what's interesting in that particular configuration is, to me, the the superstars of that box are the winged warriors, because they are basically fast enough with metabolic with a metabolic boost yeah. to was it thirty to, inches or something. Their threat range is 30 inches, and then, yeah, that's it's huge. And they can basically trade up on just about anything that's not a construct, right? Because yeah. they have the, the, the perfect configuration of a high volume of one damage armor-piercing attacks. And minus so, one to shooting, shooting against them, too. So. Sure, yeah, but, you, but I like to commit them. I like the way you're using your stalkers and hunters to apply that pressure. Um when I see playtesters or see people playing Hexagon who have more experience, they will use that, like, they will almost never have winged warriors alive after round one. <laughs> yeah. But they've but they've made a trade. They're like, okay. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah cool. Even in a lateral trade, it's still a trade, right? And sure. they're so fragile to shooting, even with the minus one, because only the four up armor and the two wounds. That it's important to get that value out of them early, yeah, and they're it, there to apply that pressure. If I recall correctly, it was uh, I had some hunters on an objective, and he mm-hmm. he hit them for like first turn, like ch- yeah. uh, charged them, killed them. Yeah, and then I charged them with my second unit of, of hunters, and then wiped sure. them out. Of but course, it was very yes. like oh. Oof. And that can be also be used to bait out another unit that may be a little further back that you want pulled in closer to maybe get off a charge with the armored hex uh, the armored hexapod, right? Yeah. Uh, I see a lot of people use the armored hexapod really passively, uh, which I think is a a bit of a mistake because it has on the engage it has armor all of those three that- damage armor piercing attacks, right? Yeah. And you get to yell bone rams, <laughs> which well, is I think my opponent did. Uh, yeah, which is so uh, much fun. <laughs> I, I, I got I got lucky with my my uh, what is it? Uh, Sh- Shikari uh, was able to with its three you know six was it yeah. six shots yep. three damage each re rolling. I was able to to pull, well two damage together. two damage. Uh, they six with three or six with two? I can't remember. Six, yeah, seven. six with three. Six with three, yeah. So good old armor pierce too. Yeah, and well, that's big against them, right? That's the one thing that could punch through that two up armor save. And then, the, but then that four up, the four up is it, it makes a difference. It extra, really extra tough. They're beefy. Even the five ups on the on the on the infantry. Yeah, on the little guys. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, is there anything from a from a tactical perspective or anything from that game that you think is you know worth sharing for hex players? be aggressive but uh pr- protect the queen I'd, I'd put the queen aggressive just have enough wounds to to protect her and yeah. with her four activations she can do whatever she can do whatever you need her to do right but yeah, if, if she's in the back suddenly she's alone and a predation pod jumps over and shoots her you know six times and she dies right yeah that's no fun yeah okay cool that's that's great um you got that game uh scored quite highly as i recall and then that puts you so you were two and zero. Oh, 
You're going into round three. This is against Realm, correct? This is against Realm, yeah. Oh, the other, okay. Another 2-0 and o player. I, I had not fought Realm since the TTS tournament months prior. So I was I was wow. a little rusty. Uh, uh, I believe his name was Jake. He was he seemed like a fun guy. He was yeah. He was he was very passionate about Realm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So for folks who don't know what's inside the Realm Army box, you have a major. You have three units of augment soldiers, two units of augment specialists, one unit of exosuits, one unit of grab skimmers, and the uh, heavy exosuit as well as a battle tank. Mm-hmm. the tank mm-hmm. yeah and they're and the thing about the realm is they're very combined arms faction they lean a little heavier on the shooting and their punch tends to be counter punch rather than aggressive forward punch definitely like, like exosuits don't necessarily want to mob into something and try to pick it up what they want to do is let something else get engaged and then mob in and clean it up Def- definitely the uh the exosuits definitely managed to get a couple kills in with their in close combat yeah 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 More they, so. they actually have uh some decent some decent punch as does the the, the heavy exosuit as well. oh yeah no I, I, the heavy was responsible for killing my uh my tank mm-hmm. both of my tanks i think actually wow okay. yeah so it sounds like the tanks were were getting beat up on but they were not very critical to your plans like they, they, they were, I mean, uh, they were able to get the units that needed to, to get somewhere. They were able to get them up close, yeah. drop drop off a stealth stalker unit with, mm-hmm. uh, with, the, with the hunt master and then went to town. Yeah. So we call that the Easter egg. Yeah. And so one of the ways that I've advised other players to deal with the Easter egg is you engage it, but you don't destroy the tank intentionally. Because what that will do is it forces the it forces the botcher player to disengage and then either drop off its cargo or shoot. Yeah. Right. And, and then, then if, if it if it then the guys are stuck in there. If they, if they don't well, get out. it's severely limiting, right? Because it either doesn't have offensive output for a round and then you're vulnerable, or it's you know you disengage and you get to shoot. You have some offensive output, but you haven't pushed the um ball forward at all right for sure so basically uh, it can become a trap you can start to kind of trap things inside of the inside of the tank if you're which, careful w- w- which is a mistake that was i i almost made during yeah. ra- round one of the game against uh realm yeah uh where i oh, i realm overextended against yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, this was this was against the, the oh, wrong player. Oh, the first. So you're talking about the first round in your game three. Yeah. Okay. In game three. I'm, yeah. So I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I was super aggressive uh, with my uh, my shikari. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I I managed to kill his his tank. Yeah. In like a volley and a half against okay. the against you know against the tank and yeah. was able to like really wound both of his his big suits. Sure. By the time his big suit charged my uh my shikari. Who was right. now out of activations? Okay, okay. Completely out of activations. Had a, you know, a, full, a full bus, you know, stalker unit, hunt master in there, and I'm like, oh, so, he, uh, so basically, he he should have left that alone. He, I, I, yeah, I I thought he was going to leave it alone, uh, and then uh, then I would have like, I'll you know, I'll activate this. Hopefully, I'll be able to get the the initiative, and I'll get to do it. But he broke yeah. it open, and then that mm-hmm. stalker unit walked through his entire yeah, totally. army. Okay, so basically he released them from their prison. <laughs> really, re- re- release the beast, yeah. <laughs> oh no, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see that that is uh, the it, the two, as the two factions with the transports, uh, that Easter egg principle is actually pretty big. The realm, surprisingly, has an easier time getting rid of that problem, as especially, they have a different problem. So while they are capable of disengaging and and dropping something off for free, uh, they have to have a major nearby to disengage or have the sub faction that allows you to disengage with one. Yeah, uh, disengage and then shoot. But they can also they're the one they have a much easier time disengaging, uh, dropping something off and shooting. Yeah, it was it hard hard to catch or something? Yeah, so that that's pretty interesting. Whereas for the Batra. The, they have a they have a different set of concerns, right? Definitely, but but be, then once they get out, being able to come out cloaked is very is very strong. It's oh, very, it is. Uh, it is. 
or or, or kill yeah killing the tank and then just get to to drop out is is also nice a hundred percent so in the in the realm matchup what was there anything interesting tactically that you encountered or anything you were concerned about uh after yeah round one was was it was a bloodbath uh I lost both my tanks, but my my infantry were essentially untouched and just just cutting a path through mm-hmm. his. Uh, he, he deployed like a like a forty k guard player deploys mm. like infantry in front, tanks you know tanks in back. Yeah, you know, and it was uh, it was very pretty to look at. But my my botcher were able to hit a unit, kill it, and then engage another unit. Or it was it was just uh, jumping. Yeah. From from well, not double engaging, but you're saying be engaged with something, finish it off, and then engage something else. Exactly. Yeah, because yeah. you can only like, engage once per activation. But yeah, exactly. totally. to activate. Yes, do it. Do it. And plus, they don't have enough AP to do do it twice anyway. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, my, my apologies. Uh, but yeah, at one point he charged me with with uh, an infantry squad. Uh, yeah. And then I activated, killed them. Yeah. And then and then charged into another unit. Uh, right. And then and then engaged them. And then yeah, it was just like and then. I, I engaged the unit because they were so close, and then and then I flamered the major death. Sure, and had no wounds to pass off, right? Nothing. Oh yeah, because I because because he had charged me with something right. that was nearby. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Yeah, I I watched some of that game. Um, that matchup for if both players are of of equal skill and the skill is low the botcher have the advantage i think it actually becomes much more parallel once the skill increases because a realm player will utilize the tool like there's two things that uh, well, there's one thing he didn't have access to and the other thing is inexperience uh inexperience the only thing you could do about that is get a bunch of games like he did that uh that player uh played all their games super awesome yeah. it is uh i i love people who come to events and even if they're having a rough set of games they just keep going right they're just yeah. they're there to play they paid they traveled there they want to do it um he, he had also fought three other botch he also fought both the other botcher players so. yeah right so just this big run of like endless frog energy right yeah frogs uh, everywhere i was i was deeply impressed by that player's commitment to continuing to play so oh, yeah. and no. and uh they got the and the wooden spoon prize in the aura event is the best prize so yeah. and that's what he got. So, heck yeah. Um, it will also help him because the it's more suits. And one of the things that I've noticed for roster building with the with Wave One models is the exosuits running an exosuit heavy list versus Batra is very helpful. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if you screen them out a little bit. Basically, you let you let the botcher player pick up augment soldiers, and then those suits can come in and just straight up, wrap, yeah, just wrap up because like you keep the major nearby, you have suits activating with four AP, yeah. engage, and then double swing. It, they will just kill whatever infantry are there. Oh yeah, easily. Yeah. Yeah, and so and then they're out there in the open, and while they may like against. I don't think they take the clap back particularly well. Uh, they only have the 28 wounds, and most botcher things, if they engage and swing, will kill them. Even with the new subfaction rule that came out for the exosuits, if you're running the phalanx formation, you do get the minus one damage. Ooh, but that's that solid. Only, it is, but it, it doesn't help against hunters, and it only takes stalkers down to twos. Uh, I think that there's a world where maybe a suit lives now against stalkers. Yeah, I, I, it, it, I, it's a dice game. It's a dice game. It, right, right. And you have hunters who are going deep. They're hitting on threes, but they're going deep with those fifteen attacks. Right. Yeah. So thirty attacks versus them, like maybe one lives again. Right. That's the danger. So you definitely want to be counter charging as realm. You do not want to. Unless you're sure that that initial engage and then swing or double swing is enough to take care of business. But the benefit of that is engage, swing, and then fall back is also possible. Or engage, swing, and then shoot. Yeah. There's a lot of, like, really great flexibility there. So Especially with the realm with their, that extra activation. If they can have that, if they get that extra activation, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. 
So that's really that's really cool. So you talked about your you talked about your matches. You went you you got your three and oh you almost perfected. I think you were like four points away from having a perfect score. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Next year. The next year. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 it was okay. It, it was it was only it was mainly because on the on the like the first round when you when yeah. you uh, the hold more like hold more objectives is really yeah. hard because the, they, they they're camping on theirs, you're camping on yours. Yeah, it's hard. To, it's hard to pull out that one that one more objective. Right. But once you start whittling them down, it makes it makes a difference. Oh, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. So, what would you share as your thoughts for Botra players, just like in general? Do you have anything you want to release as a thinking that you've had or like innovations you've come up with? Uh, just you, be, you got to be aggressive, uh, yeah. like, like especially against like other Botra. Uh, yep. You know, hanging back and just like, oh, I hope they don't come. You know, they don't come any closer. You got to early on, you know, pick off things that are that are in the open. Uh, yeah. And yeah, just got to be just got to be aggressive until, of course, when you, you when you only have like two or three units left on the board, then yeah. it's then it's, you know, then play for the objectives. But early on, just try to take out as much as you can. Well, that's great. And I'm, I'm super glad that you're enthusiastic about the game and, and oh, performing yeah. well. Like it's. It's great to see, and my goal is for the next LVO to double the size of this event. And I think we'll be able to do that, both with people and with tables. Oh, definitely. So it should be a much more dynamic field at that juncture. Yeah, no, right. I mean, while, while we were playing, we had a, at least a dozen people walk up and say, oh, what is, what is this? And then yeah. we give them a little rundown. Yeah, that's awesome. That is great. Uh, what... So, what are you most excited for in Shadow War? What do you? Salak. What do you yeah, your bo- boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I am looking forward to testing him out. Yeah, Salak. Salak is really interesting, uh, and a great looking model. So, uh, yes, I, yeah, no, I, I want that. That that. Uh, what is it? Uh, event only uh, mini. Yeah, the convention exclusive sculpt. Oh yeah, Definitely. that's super cool. Well, do you have any questions for me uh, while you have me on? Yeah. What, what, what's the what is the timeline for uh, Shadow War? Yeah. So we're it's likely the special characters will be released first. I can almost I can almost assure you that Shadow War. We're trying for the end of Q2 start of Q3 is kind of where we're where we're hanging with that one. That's great. Right, so, that's co- it's coming quick. Yeah, and I don't I don't believe I don't believe we're going to do a Kickstarter for it. Okay. I think I think we might just do direct sales. I don't know for sure. A Kickstarter actually is a lot of um art assets and it's a lot of leeway and they take a percentage and it's oh, sure. you get you get exposure and it does get you to repeat like if you missed OR the first time here's your chance to get more stuff but honestly i think we have a big enough player base now where i could just say hey here's shadow war <laughs> here's a link on the discord well yeah i could throw it on facebook the discord on the discords that we have we have the main one and then i'm on a few other ones that have their own channel and then i think between that and the store uh we could do we could do some good work there oh, sure so that's that's great. Are you coming to the? I know you're in the area. Are you coming to the uh, meet and play at the end of February at Hammerhead Games? Potentially, yeah. My, my, okay. my it's on a here. Sunday. It's, it's on a Sunday. Sunday. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I know Sundays uh, are a little better for you because of your career. For sure. I All right. That. Well, that's that's great. Well, thanks so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Uh, I asked before that we you didn't have anything that you wanted to plug except uh, support your local post office. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that's awesome. great. Thank Thanks, you so bro. much for your time, Steve. Thank you. Have a good one.